Hello, everybody. So, you know, when we first come into non-duality, we come in as lost individuals. We don't have any idea what's going on. Uh, we, we're not sure what we're in. We're not sure where we're headed. We're not sure what that leads to. We're just here because we don't actually choose to come into non-duality. Non-duality chooses us. And I say that because there's nobody, there's no individual here. There's awakeness here in a Fred suit. And awakeness here in a Fred suit has a draw through, awakeness has a draw through the Fred unit to come to know itself objectively. And as a result of that, there's a pull toward clarity. And it's a pull toward the clarity here or the clarity from anybody else that happens to be awake or, or even more awake than the, uh, than the person seek, than the original seeker. So <clears throat> we cannot tell right from wrong. We cannot tell authentic, authentic from fraud. We just can't. So, um, and there are a lot of people that play in the margins as a result of that. And I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm not saying they're doing bad things. We need them or they wouldn't be here. We can't understand why we need them, some of them, but, but you know, but it, here they are. So you can't argue with, with, uh, with the facts. Um, you'll lose every time. So what I want to talk about is polite complicity. You know, I've always said that, or, or a long time said, that non-duality is just a little too damn polite. And what I mean by that is that everybody wants to get along with everybody else. And everybody wants to be liked and everybody, you know, wants to be seen in a certain way as a, you know, serious spiritual character or as a sexy, serious spiritual character, as a, as a well-to-do serious spiritual, whatever. It's, it's what I'm telling you is that any idea that you have that you want to get something specific out of waking up, that you believe that waking up will crown you in one way or another, it's it's just wrong. It's not true. Because enlightenment is not about a, a gain. It's about a loss. So if you came here as a, a, with your ego that weighed a pound, um, when you get done with this, it's going to weigh an ounce if it, if it weighs at all. But it'll, it'll weigh something. Because it's not going to get rid of ego. The uh, ego is not even the enemy. We don't have an enemy, but if we did, it would be the belief in what we're told. And a lot of this is not our fault because the people presenting it are very nice people and they're very well-meaning people and they're good. And you know, I'm not trying to be critical on that level, but they don't really know the truth anymore either. Some of them knew it. In other words, they had an awakening experience, um, but then it passed just like yours did. Only they remembered enough and had read enough that they had um, uh, that they have uh, that the, that they can teach. I don't want to say be a false teacher because many of them don't know it. It's and it's uh, but the problem is is that these teachers in general want to be liked and uh, 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 and and see the, the what i have to re kind of constantly remind myself of is that i have to love you more than i need you to like me let me tell you what lizard Gudanta said on this because it's important that somebody says it out loud and here he does if a so-called teacher plays someone's game or lets someone get away with their unconscious self-deceptions because of the teacher's needs or desires, then the so-called student is left with the unfortunate experience of getting nowhere. Without direct, intense confrontation, students can and will only continue to repeat the patterns that make up the sense of self. They will, like the automatons they are at that stage, continue to display whatever psychology that's developed in the apparent experiencing of time man that is just i'm gonna to have to put that on the website somewhere because it's just it's perfect i mean it really is it just could, it could not have been said better why well, i won't attempt to say it better i just i just quote him so what we have is we have 
teachers that want to be liked. Who doesn't want to be liked? I mean, I, I want to be liked, but not very much. I mean, in the sense that I'm not, it's not that dear to me. Um, if I have no students at all and I have a sincere, authentic teaching, I'm okay. Um, I might be striving at this moment uh, to make a living or whatever, but that's okay too, because I didn't come to non-duality to make a living. I came to non-duality to wake up. And that was, and I didn't, I mean, you know, I came at it from an egotistical standpoint uh, because I thought it would make me a better person. I thought it would make me a, a, a more desirable mate. I thought it would make, maybe make somehow people would see what a good guy I was and I'd get hired by the right people, whatever. It's just crazy stuff that goes through the mind. And it went through the mind here. But at some point, it has to be seen that what we're doing here has to be really seen that what we really came here for was we came here because we couldn't not come here. And the reason we couldn't not come here is that awakeness wants to see itself directly and come to know itself directly so that it can have uh, an objective experience of itself more than the so-called character wants to protect itself. Ego wants to protect itself. So it comes down to you that we have to be willing, just willing. You don't have to do it because you can't do it, but you can be willing. We have to become willing to give up the belief in Fred in order to come to see the truth. Because there is no Fred, so that Fred can never come to see the truth because it's based on a lie, which is that there's a Fred that's come to believe that there's that uh, that he is a Fred or he's a God or whatever. It doesn't make any difference what Fred believes because there's no Fred. So what we're talking about really is that you are confused. And I was confused for a very long time. I can't say that, that I know a lot now, but I can say I'm not confused. The um, the less we know, the better off we are. And that's the problem. We, can't, we all come here, we know too damn much. And if we get into a situation where somebody's playing to that tune, then we're in, then, you know, and, and we're picking up on it. We like it because this matches what I was thinking. Then we're dead. We're dead in the water. I mean, better to have, uh, better to come to a teaching that you don't really understand because if you understood it, it wouldn't be necessary to come to the teaching. <laughs> and I don't really understand this teaching, for instance. I, just, I don't understand it. I just know that it works and I know how, what has to be done. I know a methodology that goes along with it, which is, it doesn't seem like you'd need a, need a methodology. And if you don't, if you don't, but if you do, you do. And what everybody's teaching, they, just, they won't call it a methodology because we've all heard that methodologies don't work, but go sit and be quiet, that's a methodology. Go chant, that's a methodology. Come sit with others, be kind to others, be good, that's a methodology. It's a methodology for a character to come to change and to see something magnificent. And it is not what happens. It's just not authentic. So when somebody comes to me in satsang, this happens sometimes, and I don't want to scare you out of satsang. You won't be in the hot seat long if you don't, you know, if you don't ask to be. Um, but if someone comes to me and they say, uh, Fred, so... Um, I'm, I'm fortunate that I, I, I woke up some time ago and I, I, and I get everything that you're saying and I'm waiting for the reason that they're here other than just to be in fellowship or to be next to you. Usually there's more than that. And then they'll say, but now what you don't realize is that the, the, the truth lies in that but. Because if I know the truth, but you don't know the truth. <laughs> you have to get your butt out of the truth, right? There's no, there's no if, ands, buts. How about if, when, where, this, that? No, it's none of that. You know the truth or you don't. And when somebody comes to me and they make an expression like, 
you know, um, I mean, you can make a dualistic expression. I'm not going to jump on you if I ch test you and 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 you say, well, I, uh, I don't know where that's coming from or whatever or that. Or even if you say, well, that's coming from Fred. That's fine. That's information I need to know is that you feel that that's coming from a Fred. Because if I know where you are, then I can help you. But if you come to me or any other authentic teacher and you try to pass yourself off as something that you're not and trying to be somewhere that you're not, then there's nobody going to be able to help you. Sureness is the death of spiritual um, ad advancement. Sureness uh, of it and arrogance. God almighty, I was chock full of arrogance. I mean, really, you couldn't stand to be in a room with me for very long. Lots of people chose to leave. And this was prior to awakening. And frankly, it was also uh, immediately after um, really awakening because the ego uh, uh, is that there was knowledge here, but there was no skillfulness. There was knowledge in the sense that I knew who I was more or less. In other words, the living experience of it had passed, but there was memory. But the living experience never passes. It never goes to memory. We just believe that it does. We believe that I got something, meaning the character got something, and I, meaning the character, lost it. I had something precious, and then I did something wrong, and I lost it. And now I want that back more than anything, because that was the best feeling I ever had, says the character. And you know what, what the character is at that point? It's a dope addict. And um, I've had to tell clients that, I won't be your dope dealer anymore, right? I'm just not. That's not what I do. Uh, I'm, what I try to do is wake people up. Sometimes I am a drug, drug dealer, but I don't mean to be. So what I'm trying to do always is to wake up um, awakeness through a unit. And awakeness through that unit is genuinely interested in living as awakeness. If you want to live in awakeness, I, that's not it. If you want to live in peace, that's not it. If you want to live as peace, that's 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 right. If you want to if you want to be in love, okay. But you know, how about just being love? How about you just want to be love instead? Because that's all there is: is love, and you're it. There's one thing going on, if you will, and that's love. And you're either love, or you are. Um, sort of a sort of a pretend love you're sort of pretending to be love and that will be seen it will be seen through you will you will be confronted by that so my idea is rather than let you go on and on with these mis, uh, mistaken ideas and notions is uh, as I do what Nisgadatta calls on us to do which is confront you now which is is to to get you early on as you come to know me is to say no what you're thinking there is wrong that's just wrong it's not true it's a lie and and you, the problem for you is not that lie but the fact that you believe it and um, people don't want to hear that right i'm just pretty well promise you that that is not going to go over really well unless you have somebody who is just really 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 dying to wake up and that's what i did because you really do have to sort of die to wake up and when i say that when i say you i don't mean awakeness i mean the character that you think you are that has to be given up because the character itself it's a lie there is no character there's just awakeness one thing going on here you're it we call we call that awakeness we call it awareness we call it god we call it spirit we call it whatever we call it but it's the same thing over and over again if we're talking about the, the correct thing, which is it's a it's a it's a it's a love in action. That's what that's what this is. That's what this whole dream, this whole uh, illusion here of of planet and people and pleasure and pain and all that. It's a gift beyond imagination. It really is. So we don't want to spurn all this. That's what. You know, and, and sometimes we can get so non-dual and so non-dual cool that we do want to spurn all this. Well, you can spurn it all if you want to, but I've noticed there's the, the, the bright awakeness here, and I don't spurn relativity. 
I enjoy relativity. I love my wife. I love my dogs. I love my home. I love this teaching. I love all of you. I can't experience that unless there's a unit here. I may love you, but I will not, uh, but I won't even know. I won't know of a me, so I can't know of a you. And I am love, but I am love unexpressed. Here I am love expressed. And I want to know more than to express that love to you unconditionally, which includes beyond the, the, the need for you to like me. You will, if you stick around, you will come to love me. And it won't make any difference whether you didn't like me back then or not. You'll come to love me and you'll say, oh, you know, I've got, I've got, I, I can have a file full of, I've got, I've got, you know, an email somewhere that just, just a trunk full of them of people writing me and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for calling me on my stuff. Thank you for telling me the truth. Thanks for being tough. Thanks for whatever. And it doesn't go down nearly as well as, oh, you're just doing fine. Come on up. Yeah. Oh, you think that's true? Yeah, that might be true, huh? Yeah, right. Yeah. And we can all meet in the graveyard. And I bet, right? I mean, it just, <laughs> it's whatever. And you feel like, so, 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 well, uh, you feel like you're going to come back. Well, tell me, who's here now? <laughs> There's nobody here now, so there's nobody that can come back. There's a sense of somebody here now, and there's a thought of that someone that isn't actually here coming back in another life. But you're not in this one unless you're awakened. You're just as what what Nisra Gaddafi say, an automaton. These are like, I mean, they're I, I like I like a lot of a whole lot of people, and I'm not critical of <clears throat> of their ignorance about this knowledge. And I don't think they should know it if they don't. <clears throat> but I do understand that they're insane. Anybody that's not awake to their true nature right now is insane. And you know, you don't help insane people necessarily by playing along with them. And they say, you know, um, I can remember when I was in the mental hospital 20, 30 years ago now, 30 years or more ago, 35 probably that when i was in the mental hospital that they had um a uh what do they call it a grandiose personality in there and this person <coughs> lied and lied and lied and lied and lied and did everything that everybody wanted to hear they wanted to hear that she was rich and she was going to be generous they wanted to hear that she had work and she was going to give us all great jobs at high pay and we didn't have to do much of anything but it was just like that. <laughs> and everybody was laughing it up. And this woman was just, just at the center of attention. Because what can I get from her? And uh, had uh, there been an authentic <laughs> teacher there, uh, even a psychologist, they would, when, they're, when, when they became aware, <clears throat> they just called her on her bullshit. She still didn't admit it. But at least there was no longer pretending that we needed to go along with her or that the, because now we're seeing <clears throat> I can be on the crazy person side or I can be on the psychologist side no matter what story I tell myself this is still a mental hospital maybe trying to get on board with the other patients is not the way to go and if I want to get out of here and I did want to get out of there and I did get out of there but I didn't get out the first time I got out very easily because I just told them uh, what they wanted to hear. I knew what they wanted to hear and I told them that. Got out right away. And the second time I went there, um, I told them what they wanted to hear and they said, that's fine, go have a seat. <laughs> and they didn't let me out because they didn't think I really understood. And I didn't, they were right. The second people were right. They wouldn't put me back on the street like that because I was a danger to myself. But I didn't want to believe that because that just, you know, that's not the way you feel. And I'm kind of looking to just feel like everybody else. So just kind of fit in and be popular. And teachers can want to fit in and teachers can want to be popular. Teachers can want to be rich and keep the and keep the money train going. Teacher can can want to be powerful and get as many 
you get as many followers as they want. I chase followers away pretty regularly, but it's, you know, not unless I have to, but if somebody just isn't coming to see things the way I see it, then they're crazy. And that's fine. They can go be crazy out here, not, not bothering my neighbors. But if you come to my door and be crazy, I'm going to tell you you're crazy and I'm going to ask you to get off my porch, right? Not because I think you're terrible, but just simply because I don't want crazy people on my porch. What if somebody comes to see me? <laughs> just a general rule about me that I don't want crazy people on my porch. Although I fairly regularly have them, the postman, the UPS, all of these people, they come to my porch and they're crazy, but I don't mind because they just do their job and they leave and they don't actually offer philosophical insights. But sometimes I even get people who come to, 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 to know things and they can understand why I am wrong. And I'm not saying that, that this thing's infallible. It's not. But the odds of it being crazy versus most other people on the planet it's just not very likely. It, this is going to be the one that's right. And I have to go with that because it's it, because it's not Fred. It's a white presence coming through this body, coming through this the, 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 the psycho psychological character here. The psychology that's associated with this body, the habits and 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 um patterns. There are patterns, psychological patterns, the physical patterns, all of that together, and their um, uh, uh, their opinions and beliefs and all that, and all that put together, that's Fredness. But there's Fredness, but there's no Fred in the center of it. Just it's just Fredness. So I will not go along with your stuff. If you come to me and I think you're bullshitting, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to try to be nice about it, and you just so that it's not picked up you know you don't feel insulted and and i don't i have no interest in insulting anybody i have no interest in humiliating anybody but if you come to my room and you start spouting your fake spirituality at me i'm going to correct it just count on it and regardless of what you think about me or what you're paying me i am going to correct it because i have run off some very well-to-do frauds and they didn't even know they were frauds they were not trying to be frauds but they were frauds and on some level most people actually know but they don't want to admit you know all oh, this is bullshit that i'm talking about <laughs> this is such a come down for ego but that's what we come here for is to find a come down for ego people come here and they and i challenge their ego and they go god almighty you're challenging me don't well, how else do you think I'm going to bust through that ego of yours? I mean, it's like iron. <laughs> yeah? So it's like Israel's iron dome. It just shoots down everything that comes close. So beware of politeness because it's really complicity. It's complicity in your misunderstanding. It's complicity in your false path. It's complicity in the dream. And those who com are complicit to the dream are in the dream themselves. I don't think they're not. I love you. I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Where, where is it? There it is. Bye-bye.